a lot has changed. A lot, that means that everything is within your touch of your fingers, like you can go, you can go, you know, you can fly away and, and go to places. I remember going to school here. We didn't have any books, we had slates totally in language. English was like totally foreign to us. I didn't start to speak English until I was 13. I went away to a boarding school. The language was strong back then. Like there are areas here like that <coughs> where the language will, will die off, where you will become extinct because, um, because the areas that people don't use like we were in the mangroves this afternoon. So all of that, everything that's in there, that the, the plant life, the animals or shells or whatever, like most kids might not know because they don't utilize it unless people takes the children there and teaches them. Mm. And that's, it's a big one. There it is. Okay, what I've got in my hand is a mud shell, and we call it ako. And it's similar to uh, mussel, pipi shell. Mr. Akiba is tuning it with lumps of beeswax. While our days are about learning Saibai culture and history, the nights are all about dancing. Our local teachers are revising the dances we've already learned. Then we're moving on to some new ones for the big performance at the end of the week. Basically all the songs in the Torres Strait, no matter what island you're from, is just about the lifestyle of the Torres Strait. They'll tell, talk about the seas, some will talk about a warrior of the islands, some will talk about their travels to other islands. So it's always about the lifestyle of the Torres Strait. People do things here collectively as a group. It's a clan activity. And it does make a work easy when everybody is given have their shared role of, you know, getting the chores done. Like in the garden. We're planting cassava. <laughs> What we've just planted is a long way of harvesting, so we're going to visit a neighbour's cassava patch. Bessie's family came to Saibai from PNG in the 1960s. And she's got a big garden that she works on it. Once it's ready to be harvested, she just digs out one mound and it's a meal for them. And it's no cost, um, just, just labor. This what you, what time you put aside to do your gardening. Today we're at the state school, the local primary school, and the, there's a dance team here and they're about to perform for us some of their dances that Uncle Cedric has taught them. 
Um, yesterday we caught a glimpse of them rehearsing, but today they're getting dressed up in proper costume and everything. At a young age, they can just start dancing straight away. As soon as they walk, they can dance. And... I think there is a very big challenge now because uh, here we are, as elders of the community, trying to educate our people about our culture, our language especially, because without that, you're lost in, in, a, in another society. Culture and your language and, and your tradition is your passport to, to uh, identify yourself who you are. And, and if you got that, you being a very unique person because you got something special, even though there's a changing time. We thought we'd show the kids a few non-traditional moves. and this clan in another year. Mr Warasam is a World War II veteran and Saibai's oldest resident. He's giving us a history lesson. When my ancestor used to live here, nobody lived beside him. People live inland, eastern end of island, they were Ayat group. Snake tribe property that way. And Emu clan all lived that side, only my ancestor lived here. They live in land there. People head on to there at that time. The London Missionary Society came to the Torres Strait in 1871. Saibai was one of the last islands to be so-called civilised. The seven clans of Saibai were encouraged to come and live together in a village. Where I come from, my grandparents and my ancestors come from inland, a place called Ait. Uh, they're fierce warriors. But for some reason, they listen to the clan people from Saive village. The crocodile clan people went over to bring all the Ait people back to this settlement, saying that there is God in heaven and uh, we must come to peace with one another. They were forbid to exercise their own religion when Christianity came. We've got plenty of our own priests now being ordained and it's very good. You know, that way it really keeps unity in the community. I was born in Saibai. This is my motherland. And I went to college in the year 1990. And I took seven years in the uh, Theological College. They celebrate traditional Anglican communion here. The anniversary of the arrival of Christian missionaries is an annual holiday and celebration. The coming of the light uh, is the uh, big day for all the Torres uh, Strait. When, when the gospel arrived, when the gospel arrived. This morning we went to Holy Trinity Church here on Saibai. So good. It's one of the highlights so far. Just to have all the elders greet you, especially when we did the peace with each other. Because normally at church it's just the queue you're in, but we went all around the church and hugged everyone. and. So good in the hymns and the singing and the music. Can't get any better than that, I think. They had um, the island singing with the island drums. It was just, a, it was an awesome atmosphere, you know, so it was great, yeah. You've seen houses have show what clan they belong to, what totem they belong to, well, here you'll see the same. It carries over into the, to the, the next life. Even today, when someone dies, in a deathbed, you can do actions of a crocodile or a snake. They do 
like a death dance. And it imitates and he makes a, a movement of a particular animal that he worships. At an average of just one metre above sea level, Saibai is being closely watched by climate change scientists. We've got a